What's going on YouTube? Welcome to Estes Angling. So as I promised you, I'm going to do a Sunday session this week. So we've come down to Lancaster House Fishery for a couple of hours. Uh, I'm just meeting my dad. So I'm just taking all my stuff down to my peg and we're going to be fishing method feeders. So we'll see if we catch a few off the bottom. It is quite warm, so they might be on the top here today, but I'm going to try something out. I'm going to fish uh, one on the breadcrumb and the other one on ground bait. So we'll see what, which works best and hopefully we catch something for you. Let's see. Right, let's get into it. So I'm going to be fishing this session on bite alarms. So I've got these set up. I'll probably have one rod out to this aerator and then I might try and cast to the far bank over there or down that back edge. So the main aim for me in this next couple of hours is testing out a couple of new rigs that I've made. Now I'm hoping these rigs are going to allow me to target some of the bigger carp in coarse fisheries. So I've just made up two mini carp rigs to go on the method feeders. Banded just as I would normally do with the lighter line. But I've got a uh, slightly thicker hook link which is a braided hook link and I've just got a little bait screw on there and I'm going to use these bigger wafters like I said to try and help me target some of the bigger carp in the lakes and we'll see if it works when combining these little rigs with the method feeders I don't think the bigger hooks and line thickness are going to put the fish off because obviously they're not going to be thinking about the rigs they're just going to be feeding on the uh, the loose offerings that are around the method feeders so I've got one little braided hook link and one that's slightly thicker fluorocarbon. These are the wafters that I'll be using, the 12 mil, so they're quite a bit bigger than the normal method feeder wafters that I use. And I'm literally just mounting them with a bait band like that as I normally would. These bait bands are slightly bigger, so they're not going to snap. But these hook links are about three inch, as you can see. And I'm literally going to try one with a band, and I'm going to try one with this bait screw as well. I don't think there's going to be a difference. I might get a better hook hold with the bait screw because it's leaving the hook a little bit more free. I'm not expecting to catch loads of fish tonight, guys. Uh, it's quite a tough little pool, this. It's only a small fishery. Uh, I have done another video, which I'll put in the top right-hand corner now, at this fishery, but surface fishing. Uh, the fish tend to be on the top, the carp in this fishery. It's very tough to get them on the bottom. So if I manage to catch a carp, on these rigs here I know that they're going to work elsewhere okay so that's one rod set up I'm just fishing with 10 pound main line just in case it's quite snaggy and I'm going to be fishing close up to an aerator so I want the uh, pulling power to get them away from that as you can see this braided hook link fits nicely into the method feeder clip there at the bottom so that's all working fine rig mechanics look good that'll sit nicely on top of the method feeder there they're only small method feeders as well these if I was doing this at another fishery, I would probably uh, use a bigger method feeder. That way you're going to be able to hide the hook link uh, in the uh, method feeder bait better. So I've got some uh, breadcrumb there. And I've also got, like I said, some, some ground bait. I've just had these frozen, so I've thawed them out while I've been at work. And that's pretty dry. I'll probably have to add some water to that. Yeah, it's really dry. It's not even sticking together. So let's go and put some water in it. Try not to fall in as well. Quite high bankings here. You know, it's uh, obviously we've had that hot spell of weather. So the, uh, the water level will be right down here. So let's get some water in here. Oh, whoa, <laughs> that's way too much. Let's tip some of that out. Okay, that'll do. <laughs> I'm sure it'll absorb in. There's some pellets in there as well, so... That's probably on the wet side, but it'll dry out. It's fairly warm this evening, so that'll be fine. Like I say, we're just testing a couple of things out tonight. Uh, we're having a bit of fun, and I've just come down a couple of hours with my dad just for a chat, and uh, that's why I'm, I'm fishing bite alarms, so we can have a chat, and I'm not focusing on watching my rod tips. That's the ground bait sorted, so let's open this breadcrumb. I'm going to try a bit of both of this around the method feeder, like I said. I know both methods work, but I've just thought them out. Like I say, quick evening session. 
So no point mixing up some fresh ground bait. Got my method mold there. I just need to screw a couple of butt rests onto this rod pod. I've not had the rod pod out in a while. Just want to say while I'm setting this rod pod up, thanks to everybody that's already subscribed to the channel. It means so much to me. The channel's growing really quickly. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, now's your time to do so. So just hit that subscribe button and make sure you click the bell notification so you don't miss any videos in the future. Right, okay, so I think we're just about ready to get this rod out. Uh, try not to hook a bush. There we go. So rod tip looks all right. I'm not wrapped around the tip or anything like that. Always check that. And we're going to load this method feeder up. Just make sure that we're not tangled up and everything's through the rod rings. There we go. So what I'm going to do, that's the hook link. Like I said, it's about three inch, three and a half inch, something like that. So I'm just going to load this up with bread. We'll start off with that. And then I'm just going to push this into the mold. Those carp hooks are lethally sharp. They're getting caught on the bag there. So I'm just squeezing this flake onto the method feeder tight. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold the hook link back over itself and just put it just in the middle of the feeder. And then I'm going to squeeze some more bread flake around that just so that when that lands in the water, it's not going to get tangled up. Um, it'll probably break off the method feeder on the way down to the bottom, which is fine. All I'm going to do, because this is a tiny fishery, I'm just going to underarm this out. I'm going to try and get it tight up to that aerator if I can. So open the bail arm. There we go. That's close enough. It'll do. I don't want it too tight to it. Otherwise, there's a chance of a fish bolting around the aerator, and we don't want that. I'm just laying that on the rod rest there. That's perfect. I'll probably uh, bring the back of the pod up a little bit to uh, drop my rod tips down. But that's fine for now. Make sure that my bait runner's on, which it is. So let's raise the back of this rod uh, pod up to drop the rod tips down. There we go. That'll do. So that's perfect there. I'm just going to pull a little bit of line out so we can see some indications on the bobbin if we need to. I've got a feeling that will just rip off. We won't get any kind of indications first. So I'm going to set this other rod up and we're going to put the uh, other hook link on it. Well, we're in there, boys. I've managed to get it away from the aerator. I was panicking a little bit because it was pulling for the metal poles that come out of the side of the aerator. Like a decent one. Drag set way too high. Don't tell me my feed has come off because that tail rubber's off. I think my feed has come off, hasn't it? Just shows you that them feeders can come off if it's snagged or whatever. Hey. I don't know. That's obviously what they're designed to do. Never had that before. Look at that. Lovely first fish, straight away. Seven pound-ish. Awesome. Can't believe it, yeah. So, feeder's literally just pulled off, on it? Slid right off, which is obviously a safety mechanism. How big was yours, lad, when you got here? It was on the uh, breadcrumb. No, let's get it back.
Right, folks, so method feed has come off the stem, so we better put another one on. So the tail rubber just slips off like that. And the Preston Innovations method feed is these. We've got heavy duty elastic in the end of the feeder there. So there's a small end and a big end to the method feeder. And that just slips in and it pushes in tight. But as you could see with that fish, if you get a violent take, they can um, pull off the method feeders. And it's easy enough to pull the tail rubbers off. So if the fish gets snagged up, they are going to pull it off. And they're not going to be towing around a method feeder, which is great. Uh, I'm fishing 10 pound line, so that wouldn't happen anyway. But there's the rig. Tiny little carp rig on, uh, I think that's a size 8 hook. The rig's 3 to 4 inches long. And I've just got my bait screw uh, attached to the hook using a D rig. Right, let's get this rod out again. We've not got loads of time this evening. We've only got an hour or so. So we're not going to catch loads of fish, but I'd, I'd like to try for another. So let's get this method feeder loaded up again and get it back over to that aerator. Start building up a bit of a swim if we can. So same again. I'm just going to squeeze some of this breadcrumb into the mold. Like that. And then I'm just going to press the feeder into the mold tight. Squeeze that bread around it. And there we go. It just pops out. And then just fold my hook link back up and over to the middle of the feeder. And just squeeze that on. And like I said, that'll flake off on the cast. We're starting to lose the light now, guys. I've not had anything else yet. But this is the fishery. Like I said, it's only a small fishery. It's called Lancaster House. I'll put the area in the description. Only room for a few anglers on here. We're finally in again, boys. It's only small, this one. I'm surprised it's managed to take that wafter. But it's a great fish to end on. Well, guys, I'm going to get packed up shortly. I know it's only been a short session, so I'm sorry about that. But sometimes you've just got to get on the bank when you can get on the bank. But at least we've caught. That's the main thing. And I just wanted to try out those couple of rigs. And they've been a success. So I'll look forward to seeing you in the next Westies Angling.